Okay, uh, Professor Conyers, I guess I shouldn't say that because we're, we're being more intimate here because we're in a COVID situation right. and we close, <laughs> we fraternity right. brothers right. and whatever. Anyway, um, uh, I'm gonna just go call you, uh, buddy, if right. you don't mind. So look, look, buddy, you've been to- we've been talking about Blyden or the, the how Blyden got to Liberia, but you and you were saying in the last section that Blyden is Liberia. Liberia is Blyden. From 1850 on, by and large. Tell me, know, tell me about it. Well, again, from 1850 on, uh, Blyden, as I said, Blyden immigrated to Liberia, mm-hmm. and the history of Liberia is interwoven with the history of Edward Wilmot Blyden in so many ways. His great intellectual capacity made him indispensable to almost anything that was happening in Liberia. At various points in time, he held two, three, even sometimes four ministerial positions in the government because he was such an intellectual giant. Hmm. And his worldview and philosophy, what he was trying to do, uh, (coughs) affected Liberia in so many ways. So, Again, when we talk about Liberia, at least from 1850 forward, mm. that's interwoven quite with the history of Blyden because his influence in, in Liberia and his influence even next door in Sierra Leone were massive. Mm. So really, it's really hard to extricate Blyden from the history of Liberia. Mm. You know, it's like it's like, you know, it's like trying to extricate talking about your heart from your arteries. Mm. You can talk about the heart and not talk about the arteries directly, but the two are bound together. Mm, 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 mm. Well, how do we, now we haven't talked directly to say Pan-Africanism. Right. Um, did that develop while he was in Liberia? Do you have this thought before he came to Liberia? What's going on with this? No. And was he, and where's Samuel Delaney, you know, what's, what's going on well, with Well, that's him? American, so we don't yeah. need to. But I mean, in the, in the time period of. Same like, time period. That's right. But uh, I guess. Delaney, not Samuel uh, Delaney. Mondelein. Mondelein. Mondelein is a little bit older than Blyden, but mm-hmm. same, you know, they're contemporaries. In the same time period, you're talking about the 19th century, Martin Delaney right. was here in the United States, of course, mm-hmm. was a major in the Union Army during the Civil War. And so, uh, and Martin Delaney, came to the idea of immigrating or finding a home for African people here someplace else, mm-hmm. you know, around the same time as Blyden, but a little bit later than Blyden. But I was just wondering, did they have any communications with each other? That's what I'm asking. They knew of each other. They knew of each other, but did they? Yeah, yeah, they did. And, uh, other, and other people who knew them? I mean, how yeah, did that? They, they had some communication. And uh, there were even some disagreements between them on, on mm-hmm. certain kinds of things, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Delaney and Robert Campbell and Henry Bibb, these were Americans who went to Africa, especially to the area of Nigeria, mm-hmm. looking for a possible home for uh, African, Afri- I'm not going to say African Americans because we wasn't African Americans yet in slavery, but for black immigration mm-hmm. to Africa. And of course, they chose like one of the places that they looked at was uh, certainly not uh, Liberia, but they chose the Niger Delta area. And there's a book on this, you know, mm-hmm. and looking for a place to live, live for African people. And of course, you know, Blyden traveled to that area. He knew of them. And, you know, there were some meetings between them, but there was also some disagreements because Blyden mm-hmm. certainly mm-hmm. thought that mm-hmm. Liberia would be the place. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll continue. I will just, just how did, again, the, the question is, how did he come upon this thing? What What is this Pan-Africanism? How did it develop in his brain? What's, yeah. what's going on? How did Remember, that... I told you, he first came to Africa with the idea of Christianizing and educating his heathen brothers. Mm-hmm. While there, I guess the only way we can do this and talk about him mm-hmm. is just through his brilliance and through observation. Mm-hmm. He be, gradually began to have an appreciation for things African. What he saw among African people and the organization of their villages and their mm-hmm. social systems and their religion, he began to realize it wasn't an inferior thing, mm-hmm. that it was actually, you know, something that was very intelligently done. It had a worldview. It had some. So gradually over the period of time, he began to evolve from the idea of, you know, educating his heathen brother to appreciating mm-hmm. things that were African. Okay. And as he educated himself more and more, that appreciation grew. He is the first African to write a book on the history of African people. Mm. You know, the Negro in history. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, you know, he made mistakes in some of these things. Remember, there was no hindsight for him. Nobody was before him. Now. And, you got to make yeah. mistakes. I mean, there were people yeah. before him who said them positive things about Africa. You know what I mean? Jos- Jos- um, so I'm sorry. Um, Josiah mm-hmm. Easton. In his book in 18, I forgot the year was, I think it was 1835, 
that he published his book is in the Schomburg Library on on uh, a treatise on the inter I think it's the call and for some reason I'm forgetting right now. Uh, the treatise on the intellectual development mm -hmm. of Africans, or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, you know, I've come across that. I've yeah, seen it. and so uh, you know, that's in 1835. Blyden mm -hmm. was only three years old mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. that particular point, but no one took it to the level that Blyden had taken it to with his inquiry. You mm -hmm. know, he's the first person to even write a book on African culture. Mm -hmm. He called it African Life and Cultures. It was written in 1908, a few years before his death, mm -hmm. and so gradually through observation. Through study, he began to have an appreciation for things African. And he saw Liberia, this is before Garvey now. Gar mm. Garvey wasn't born until 1887. He saw Liberia, mm. you know, as a place where African people could develop an African empire mm -hmm. that would influence the rest of Africa and influence the entire African world. Mm -hmm. So that's what he saw. And that's one of the things, of course, that Garvey would later see. Mm -hmm. At that particular point in time, there were two, only two independent states in Africa, Liberia and Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yeah. So it, it was gradual. Mm -hmm. But by 1861, mm -hmm. you know, along with an American, that from here, at the Reverend Alexander Alexander Cromwell, you know, he was instrumental in developing what was then became known and still known as Liberia College. They were part mm. of the founders of Liberia College. Mm. Now, Liberia College, this gives you some insight into what God Blyde is thinking. Liberia College was was the place where Africans would receive an African education. Okay. 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 Now he was saying he came up with that idea. African, Him and Alexander Cromwell. Who Alexander Cromwell is all is from where? From here, the United States. But, okay, I'm, I'm, I understand. Okay, fine, fine. Okay. Right, who but, immigrates who, over for a period of time? But when he says he's from the United, who is he? I mean, he's he a is? reverend. He's a reverend, but he wasn't enslaved. He was whatever. No, you know, okay. he's up in the north here, right? Okay, okay. And he goes over and he works with Blyden for a period of time, and both of them. Well, I got to ask you, wait, is it white guy, black guy? No, it's black. Black guy. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Both of them become, in essence. Mm -hmm. In the eyes of other people, and certainly in the eyes of the mulatto class, mm -hmm. become radicals. Because mm -hmm. education, as they saw, would be education that would liberate the African mind mm -hmm. and instill in the African a sense of pride, history, and culture, and an appreciation, certainly an appreciation mm -hmm. for African history and culture. Blyden would later characterize this this way. Uh, he would say, the education for the African is the kind of education that needs to bring the African home to himself. Mm. All right. Today, we would call that Afrocentric education. Well, what you're also talking about, it sounds like, um, you know, I, I, back in the day, I used to listen to a lot of people, you know, like even from from Bobby Wright, a, right. a bunch, bunch of people. But you, it's, but I've noticed that most of the psychologists. Right. Are doing are talking exactly what you're talking about. Blind is talking. It's a weird sort of thing. But if I was to listen to anybody, I love you historians. No, 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 right. no, no offense. I love you historians, right? And, and of course, I love my art artists, artistic people, right. right? But to me, the psychologist, that mind thing is the most important thing. And it seems to me that Blind, if, you, if I was going to call him anything, I don't know anything about him. I would say his mind, right? For a mind to 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 go from heathen to African centered thought. It's in a, it's, I, I don't know. How many people do that these, even today? Very, very few people. Blyden, so, in his, Blyden, as some scholars have said, saw the entire picture. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he saw what Du Bois was talking about with the Talented Tenth. Mm -hmm. He saw what Booker T. Washington was talking about in terms of industrial education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he saw what Marcus Garvey was talking about. He saw, before all of them, mm -hmm. he saw the whole picture. So within what I call Blydenic philosophy or the Blydenic worldview within that mm -hmm. is African psychology, African history, okay, African okay. culture. Mm -hmm. Everything is within it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't recall not one time reading anything that I've read about Blyden where he says black psychology, but mm -hmm. it was black psychology. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say anything in terms of the terminologies that we now use, African centricity, Afrocentricity, Afrocentricity, you don't hear those terminologies, mm -hmm. but it was. Some people say that he was a pre-Afrocentrist. I debate that because the mm -hmm. essence and core of what he was saying uh, is in, its, in and of itself as African centric as anything that I know about. Mm. But of course, that's an argument within the discipline. Mm. But he was ahead of his time that way. And this is mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I said in the last session 
that by the time the end of his life, remember, he grew up in a world where the entire African world mm. was being humiliated with slavery and, mm. and everything. Mm. And so he was one of the few people who was enlightened mm. about stuff pertaining to the African world. Mm. And so that's one of the reasons why many of the intellectuals during his day at Liberia College and other places could not understand him. Mm. They were still bound to the European paradigm, the European worldview in many, mm. many ways, which Blyden was seeking to liberate himself totally from. Mm. You know, there were certain things that w when you are enculturated within a culture, that is very, very difficult to get rid of, no matter how hard you try, mm. you know? But I would dare say, for all essential things, Blyden was able to liberate himself. Mm. One of the things he couldn't liberate, he did not liberate himself totally from, mm. was Christianity. Oh. Although he... Well, he's, remember, he's trained in formative yeah, years. Yeah, but let so me just qualify that. About psychological. Although he was one of the harshest criti critics of European Christianity, and he actually leaves the church, the Presbyterian church, and becomes mm. what he calls an itinerant minister of the truth. Okay. This is one of the reasons he had the I, book. I like that one. Yeah. Uh. Christianity, Islam, and the Negro race. Now, that book is not really a, a book. It's what it is. It's selections mm -hmm. of his writings from those days, talking about Islam, Christianity, and so on and so forth, put into a book form. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what most people see, they see it as one whole book, but it's actually selections of writings put into the book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh, well, listen, um, we, we have to continue. Not, well, I shouldn't say continue. Let us stop here, right? But uh, I need you to, you know, we're, 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 we're pandemic, we're pandemic down, right. so we can't go no place. So I got you captured for at least six months. I, I don't know how long this thing is going to be. Yeah. But I want you to start thinking, uh, uh, Professor James Conyer, I want you to start thinking about uh the influence of Blyden on other people from from from, from the time he was functioning until right. you know, on onward, just for our, for our next topic okay. of discussion. Well, the influence was, I can tell you, the influence was massive. I understand that. Right. I, I just want to know a little bit about, about... And indirect. And remind me to bring those points up next time. And the reason I have to say both direct and indirect, mm -hmm. in the indirect fashion, many people assume that the worldviews and philosophies that you hear from many of the known people, the Booker T's mm -hmm. and everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, was directly, they said everything. However, it's because Blyden was whited out of history that what the foundations that he led that many of these people adopted, even though they were brilliant people and read in various journals and, you know, and various things that Blyden has said, mm -hmm. that influence of Blyden was still there. Mm -hmm. That influenced all of the discussions that would follow Blyden mm -hmm. in many respects. So even though his name was not known, some of these influences were passed down in these various discussions, even though no one said this came from Blyden. Mm. The influence was there, certainly, on Marcus Garvey. Mm. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.